It is a major issue across the country. We'll tell you how you can look out for signs of human trafficking. A local council member has proposed doubling the cap on city campaign contributions. Plus, a cold front dropped temperatures into the 50s today. Meteorologist Adam Kasky will be here to talk about how long we can expect the cold snap to last. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9. Streaming from here in the KSAT 12 newsroom, I'm Tiffany Huertas filling in for Myra Arthur. Three federal judges are blocking a Trump administration rule that would make it more difficult for immigrants to get legal status if they receive public assistance. Friday's rulings in New York, Washington State and California come just days before the regulation was set to go into effect on Tuesday. Under the rule, green card and visa applicants could be turned down if they have low incomes or limited education because they'd be deemed more likely to need government help in the future. That includes most forms of Medicaid, food stamps and housing vouchers. Now the judges ruled the blockage of what's known as the public charge applies nationwide. The Trump administration is expected to appeal the ruling. It's a first of its kind training for nurses with Baptist Health System. The staff is learning how to spot human trafficking signs. I take a look at what a nurse's role is in combating human trafficking and what parents should look out for. There are two categories of human trafficking, sex trafficking and labor trafficking. And sometimes healthcare professionals are the first line of defense. Chief nurse executive for the Baptist Health System, Kristen Lemus, says this summer the hospital provided a class to employees to ensure they are prepared to identify victims. We had a local expert here um, come in and train our nurses on just identifying, looking for clues um, when a patient presents in the ED or they present up on the floor. Some of the things that we look for um, that would be red flags for us are patients who come in for like pelvic pain, um, assault, um, wanting an STD check. Um, those would be some of the signs um, any type of, you know, bruising on their body. Lemma says they learned how to look for signs from different viewpoints. So he taught us both ways. He taught us, you know, what to look from a nursing perspective, but also what to look for as a parent. Here are signs parents should look out for. Bruises in various stages of healing caused by physical abuse, scars, mutilations, or infections due to improper medical care, urinary difficulties, pregnancy, disorientation, confusion, phobias, or panic attacks caused by daily mental abuse, torture, and culture shock. In Texas, the number of human trafficking cases are rising. According to the National Human Trafficking Hotline, in 2016, 681 cases were reported. In 2017, that went up to 811 cases. Last year, there were 1,000 human trafficking cases reported. Lemma says that they will be training more employees in the upcoming months. Not only nursing, but our techs, our physicians, everyone else is educated as well because they might not open up to a nurse, but they might open up to somebody else that's caring for them. You know, maybe we can offer help, but they may not accept it at that time. But if we can just even like plant that seed and maybe like the next time they come in, you know, they'll accept it. Um, that's important to do too. Here's a look at the agencies and their phone numbers if you need to report suspected human trafficking. A city council member is arguing that the cap on campaign contributions in council and mayoral elections is leading candidates to neglect potential new voters. It's why Manny Belaez has proposed city council double the limit on individual campaign donations. The District 8 councilman says the current limit leads candidates to focus their efforts only on the voters they know are most likely to turn out. So he wants the cap raised from $500 to $1,000 in council races and from $1,000 to $2,000 in mayoral races. A campaign consultant for Belize and other local candidates says everything campaign related has gotten more expensive since 2004 when the current limits were adopted. Signs, t-shirts, mailers, even labor. For instance, right now, uh, the city pays a, a living wage, which is $15 an hour. And if council members aren't paying their campaign workers a living wage, it seems a bit hypocritical. In June 2018, the previous council voted down a proposal to raise council and mayoral campaign donation limits to $750 and $1,500 respectively. 
ISIS has claimed responsibility for a car bomb in Syria. San Antonio police say a love triangle is what led to a stabbing at a hospital. And cupcakes handed out for free at a Pennsylvania school caused a stir this week. Here's a look at some of the most interesting stories from around the world and here at home. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. Here at home, a man convicted of murdering his co-worker then burning the body, sentenced to life in prison. Ernesto Esquivel Garcia was convicted in the killing of Jared Vargas. Vargas's body was found inside a burning apartment on Jones and Maltzberger in June of last year. The Islamic State has claimed responsibility for a deadly car bomb in Syria. The bomb went off in a busy area, killing at least four people. San Antonio police say a love triangle led to the stabbing of a man inside Methodist Specialty and Transplant Hospital. Police say they don't know who did it. Now it's just a matter of time tracking down that man. That man who was stabbed had been a visitor at this hospital, accompanying a woman. Police say the other man showed up and a fight broke out apparently having to do with the woman. Police say at no point during this whole thing did the hospital go into lockdown mode. They say it happened so quickly with the suspect escaping and there was no time for that to happen. Massive wildfires burning in California. Time lapse shows flames devouring this hillside. The National Weather Service has now extended the red flag warnings for some areas, saying the fire danger could continue until tomorrow evening. Free cupcakes at a Pennsylvania school sparking controversy this week. Some students complained about the message that came with the cupcakes. They read, quote, each cupcake is for a child who does not get to celebrate a birthday because of abortion. The ACLU says legally, all clubs at public schools have the right to distribute a political message to all the students. The law is very clear that every other student group in the school has the same rights. Well-known actress and activist Jane Fonda arrested while participating in a climate protest in Washington. She was one of 15 people arrested. Fonda was demonstrating with the group that has pledged to hold demonstrations every week focused on climate change. Southwest Airlines is getting rid of its lowered senior fares. The airline says the discount is over as of December 11. According to a new study, honeybees can count higher than originally thought. Building on research that determined bees can count up to four and compute basic arithmetic. The new findings reveal they can learn numbers even higher. The lead scientists observed bees are a lot like humans and more likely to make the right choice to avoid a negative consequence. A Washington state family has a close call with a bear. They were on a hike when the bear came up to them. The bear took a quick sniff and then continued on its way. To read more about these nine stories, just head to ksat.com slash news at nine. I love this weather, but you know what? You know how I know it's still cool outside? Hmm. I sit right by the door. Oh, it's <laughs> constantly opening and closing yeah. and you get that gust of whether it's hot and humid air, mm -hmm. or like today, that cool air. Nice and cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and love so it. that cold front, boy, it changed everything like that this morning. It, uh, it really just kind of did a big 180 on our weather here. No one's complaining though. I don't think. I'm so. not hearing any complaints <laughs> yet. I know some people love the warmth and the humidity, but I, for the most part, people have really liked this change. And we really went from summer-like conditions you could argue down into winter like conditions because this afternoon we were in the 50s and that's typical in December around South Texas and San Antonio, but 57 right now, dew point of 33. Wind has still been gusting up to 20 miles per hour, but it's starting to pump the brakes gradually. It's steady at 12 miles per hour. Nothing like earlier today when it was steady around 25, okay? And it was gusting to 40, so it is slackening up a little bit and gradually and we'll continue to do so through the night. Now look at this compared to this time yesterday. We're about 30 degrees cooler now compared to 24 hours ago. Earlier today during the afternoon, we were 41 degrees cooler than the previous afternoon. We went from the 90s down to the 50s. Unreal just within 24 hours right now widespread 50s. 52 Kerrville, 57 here in San Antonio and Pleasanton included as well. You go northward, we're down in the 40s where the sky is actually clear. So you get the radiate the radiational cooling and then 30s and 20s as you get farther north up the plains. 
and we had some areas of rain. We had a few showers in and around South Texas with the passage of the front. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of action for us, but this is a big wide reaching system. A real deal fall wound up uh, energetic weather maker and weather system, even bringing some very early season heavy snow on the order of a few feet to parts of North Dakota. Here we still have a few sprinkles out there tonight and that's going to be it. And even into tomorrow, we will probably see a few little blips on the radar screen in terms of just stray sprinkles, but that should be it. 49 in the morning, 60 at noon, 65 for the high temperature. If we squeeze in a little more sun than we're expecting, I think we'll make it up to 70 degrees, but overall mainly gray. As we go into Sunday, still very similar sky conditions, mostly gray outside, not much of a breeze there. 53 in the morning on Sunday and 73 in the afternoon. So here you have it. Notice we go from 60s tomorrow, 70s on Sunday, and then Monday it's back to the humidity and even temperatures back into the 80s as well. With that extra humidity, we could actually see a few isolated showers toward the middle of next week. So that's something we'll keep, keep an eye on and of course update accordingly. Just because you see something trending online doesn't mean it's accurate. At the end of every week, the Associated Press puts together a roundup of some of the most popular but completely untrue stories and images of the past several days. Let's take a look. Here's our first claim of the night. Video shows migrant children attacking a teacher and vandalizing a classroom in Europe. The video has been making the rounds on Facebook with a caption that states, now you know why our teachers are not doing well anymore. But that video is being misrepresented. It actually shows an attack in Brazil earlier this year. Here's another one. Video shows a banner stating, quote, betrayed and murdered the Kurdish people, end quote, hanging from the Trump International Hotel in Las Vegas. Here are the facts. The video has been digitally altered to include the massive banner. It was created by a Twitter user in response to President Donald Trump's decision to pull troops out of northeast Syria this week, ahead of attacks by Turkey on U.S. allied Kurdish forces. Here's our last claim of the night. Following a ban on face masks, protesters in Hong Kong are using wearable face projectors to trick the government's facial recognition system. But the wearable projector is conceptual. It doesn't actually work. The Associated Press reports an artist designed the headpiece to show how privacy might be protected in public places. Over the past week, you may have heard a lot about those Hong Kong protests in relations to the NBA. The league has been put right in the middle of a geopolitical conflict, and there is still a lot of uncertainty about what will happen next. RJ Marquez helps us understand how it all started with a tweet. A week ago, Houston Rockets general manager Daryl Morey tweeted a since-deleted image showing his support for pro-democracy efforts in Hong Kong. That set off a firestorm in China. Here's why. The relationship between China and Hong Kong is complicated to say the least. Hong Kong has operated with certain political freedoms under China, but a controversial bill proposed by the Hong Kong government earlier this year aimed to allow criminal suspects to be extradited to the mainland. This caused an uproar by opponents who claimed the bill would undermine Hong Kong's legal independence. Opponents also believe China could use the extradition bill to go after anyone who is perceived to be a threat to the communist government. Massive protests against the bill started over the summer, and there has been ongoing chaos between pro-democracy demonstrators and police. Back to the NBA. The Chinese Basketball Association criticized Mori for his tweet and said it strongly opposed his stance. Sponsors and media outlets stopped operations with the Rockets, prompting Mori to apologize. The NBA initially sat on the fence on the topic, but received heavy criticism here at home by those who said the league was kowtowing to China and not defending free speech. Commissioner Adam Silver then publicly said the league supported Mori and would not regulate what its players and employees say on these issues. That upset the Chinese government even more, and since then, China and the league have gone back and forth, shutting down several media events with teams and players. Coincidentally, the NBA is currently in China for preseason games. The financial fallout for the league is massive. Nearly all of its NBA's financial partners in China have cut ties with the league. The NBA has a $1.5 billion deal to stream games in China, and players often sign lucrative deals with Chinese companies. There are millions of NBA fans in China, and the league has made strides for decades to reach the Asian market. It's hard to predict what will happen next, 
but the league said it will defend free speech as it deals with the economic fallout. For The Nine, RJ Marcus. And we'll be back in just one minute. Heading out of town? Take the KSAT weather app with you. Just go to locations, add your destination to your list of favorites, and you'll be able to see a forecast. That way, you know what to pack. That's pretty important. Download or update your KSAT weather app today. Here at home, Northeast Independent School District wants to use it as a teaching moment. A student was arrested at Bradley Middle School after district police say they found a loaded handgun in his pocket. The officers found the weapon after they were tipped off by students. The district says there was never a specific threat to students, but this is still an example of if you see something, say something. It's always better to come forward, let somebody know about that. It's always going to be better safe than sorry. That was NEISD spokesperson Aubrey Chancellor. She says the boy claimed he had the gun for protection, but didn't elaborate. Let's turn to some of tonight's top stories. A key witness in the House impeachment inquiry testifying behind closed doors today. Marie Yovanovitch is the former ambassador to Ukraine and was removed from her post in May. According to a copy of her statement obtained by The Washington Post and New York Times, she says she was removed because of, quote, unfounded and false claims, end quote. This was in reference to the effort led by the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, and his associates. She suggested some of those associates had financial motivations for pushing her out. Money President Donald Trump is using to build the border wall could be in jeopardy. A federal judge ruled today the national emergency declaration is unlawful. The president's declaration allowed him to bypass Congress and use money allotted for military construction to build the wall. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. WeWork may get a bailout within the next week. The co-working company is seeking a lifeline after shelving its plans for an IPO. JP Morgan is reportedly working on a rescue package that would include its own money. That is according to the FT. WeWork needs a cash infusion by the end of November. Restructuring, including layoffs, are expected at the company. And Elon Musk says the Crew Dragon Man capsule is in the final stages of development. The SpaceX built capsule is being funded by NASA and SpaceX's own funds and represents NASA's best bet of launching American astronauts from American soil. U.S. astronauts currently hitch a ride with the Russians after the space shuttle retired in 2011. And it's quite literally Uber for boats. The ride-sharing app is testing boat service in the city of Lagos, Nigeria, a notoriously congested metropolis that happens to be built on a lagoon. It's a signal of Uber's efforts to work on transit outside of its core rideshare service, but comes at a price. The service is going to cost $1.50, but the average cost of living there is two bucks a day. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Kristen Scholler from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. We've come to the end of another long week full of big local headlines. From charges made in connection with the shooting death of a 13-year-old to a new chapter for Bear County Precinct 2. RJ Marquez gives us a look back at the week in 210. A 14-year-old boy and his grandfather arrested in connection with the shooting death of a 13-year-old boy in far north Bayer County. The deadly shooting happened last month on Pine Eagle Lane. Sheriff's investigators say the suspect said Ignacio Romo Jr. accidentally shot himself. However, investigators say that suspect pulled the trigger by accident. Sheriff Javier Salazar says his grandfather, 75-year-old Robert Lee Voigt, bought the gun for the team. The fact is that, that now there's a 13-year-old that's no longer with us, and it was because uh, someone saw fit to just let this 14-year-old uh, play with this weapon as if it were a toy. The 14-year-old is accused of taking the gun and trying to clean it. That's when it allegedly fired.
Uh, I will faithfully execute the duties of the office. The duties of the office of the Bear County De Bear County Deputy Constable. There was a new constable for Bear County Precinct 2. Leticia Vasquez was sworn in Wednesday. Bear County commissioners named her to replace the former embattled constable. Michelle Barrientes Vela was forced to step down after declaring she was running for Bear County Sheriff. Vasquez named Leo Horton as her new chief deputy, saying that starting with a clean slate is her first priority. There soon may be repairs for the failed Lake Dunlap Dam. The Preserve Lake Dunlap Association announced a plan this week to work with the Guadalupe Blanco River Authority to fix the dam. The GBRA would take up a loan and homeowners would create a water district to raise taxes and pay the loan back over the next 30 years. Everybody here that's waterfront property wants the lake back instead of what we have now with a river with no water. Property owners would vote in May to create the district. Swarms of crickets showed up across the San Antonio area. KSAT viewers sent pictures of area shopping centers and stores packed with crickets. The change in weather is likely to blame for the cricket crisis of 2019. This week, we took viewers to Mexico City as San Antonio prepares for its Day of the Dead celebration. Our stories on the historic center of Mexico City, the Templo Mayor, and the true meaning behind Dia de los Muertos were shown this week. San Antonio will host a Day of the Dead parade and celebration along the Riverwalk on November 1st. And this week in 210 is just one of the franchises we feature every week on KSAT News at 9. Here's a look at some of the other stories, and be sure to tune in on Monday for an all-new adulting hack. Welcome back. It's Friday. Happy Friday, RJ. Yeah, happy Friday. Let's take TGIF. a look at what's trending this week. Absolutely, yeah. A cool mix of stories today. And we start first with the most important survey of mankind. Definitely. Okay. Uh, this is a survey about the most popular Halloween candy. Um, and before I move on to any of the results here, uh, do you have a favorite, Tiffany? Halloween candies. I would say any... Snickers, <laughs> anything with anything chocolate. With chocolate. Or yeah. I like dark chocolate, but I don't think those are in a lot of no, the, the that, candy. That really they have like the, the milk chocolate. The cut, though. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite? <laughs> um, I like Milky Ways. That one did oh, not yeah. make the cut either. No. But I'll tell you what did. These guys right here, Reese's, oh. Reese's peanut butter cups. Yeah. These are the most popular favorite candy for Halloween and. Patrick, Director Patrick, has <laughs> these just all over the place. He's, he he's always constantly gives supplying candy. us with sugar. Yeah, I see them everywhere pop up. I'm like, that's Patrick. I'm like, yeah, that has There you go. Yeah, <laughs> um, we have the full results on our website. And pretty interesting. You mentioned Snickers. That one was second place. M&M's came in in third place. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty interesting study as we get ready for uh, Halloween. It's coming right up. Yeah, I'm so excited. Cool. I want to dress up this year. Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> all right, moving on here. And uh, we're talking a little bit before we went on camera about the cooler weather so yeah I think we can all definitely appreciate the fact that it is starting finally starting to feel like fall so we have on KSAT.com a map that shows 37 37 okay patio bars that people can really enjoy uh, a nice beverage in the cooler weather. I like how you said that, a nice beverage, <laughs> a nice beverage. in the cool weather. <laughs> you probably don't want to do all 37 in one day, but... Uh, Why not? I mean, yeah. and okay. then just do a video and send it to us and we'll share it. There you go. <laughs> but that's so um, interesting. Yeah. I, I need to explore a lot of these because I'm looking at that list and I, I haven't been to you. none of these. Yeah, I was going to ask you. Um, I've been to a few of these, the Luxuries, one of my uh, favorite. Oh, okay. Right there. I've uh, been to the well a few times. Paramore's uh, right here. Paramore is right Right around the corner it's a cool spot La Gloria as well so uh, yeah a lot of different options if you guys have any plans for this weekend or just want to you know check out the scene check out what's going yeah, on yeah and you can wear your boots with the fur oh, you know so it's gonna be chilly <laughs> flow right <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay all right Tim you're ready I'm ready yeah. for this weather all right speaking of drinks uh, the non-alcoholic version at least we think um, Topo Chico are you a fan yes, of Topo Chico yes I am you love Tobo Chico. Okay. Um, I don't drink it really no? as much. Have you no. tried it? I tried okay. it. Yeah, I'm just not a big mineral water type of person. That's what so I thought that. too, but something oh, about that Tobo Chico yeah. is very <laughs> interesting. So um, this story we posted today, uh, 
uh, is really trending, a lot of people clicking on this, it's uh, titled, What's Really in Topo Chico and Is It Good for You? So this article kind of breaks down what's actually in Topo Chico and it includes sodium, magnesium, all that type of stuff and also the legend of Topo Chico as well. Yeah. Wow, so just in time bit, for Halloween. Yeah, a little bit of backstory <laughs> on that too. And again, a lot of people clinging on this story. People just really love Topo Chico. I mean, I think it's just a staple here yeah. in South Texas. <laughs> yeah, we, and we go for it with everything. Yeah. I can have it at midnight. I can have it right now. Yeah. I mean, right here. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Whoa, I was about to say, okay. <laughs> okay. We have props today. Yeah, we have definitely. Props. Um, so, uh, Tiffany, those are the stories that are trending today on KSET.com. All right. Thanks so much. Right. Thank you. We'll be right back. Friday, happy cold front day. Not a good lip gloss day, ladies. It's just gonna get stuck. Things will be staying cloudy for the rest of your Friday. We'll have a chance of some showers and sprinkles through the afternoon as well. And winds will be staying gusty. Gusts could be up to 30, 35 miles per hour through late this afternoon. So for any Friday night football games, bundle up, bring a blanket, jacket. It's gonna be chilly out there. Today, our temperature is limited to the 50s. We will see a warming trend as we get into the weekend, but I expect plenty of cloud cover to hang around Saturday into Sunday as well. Afternoon temperature Saturday in the 60s by Sunday. We'll be back in the mid 70s. Finally feels like fall parkour. Ah, spread some love this weekend. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. The night beat starts in 30 minutes.